Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, our viewers, our friends of Cronin Law Firm. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's such a glorious day. It's another Tuesday here in Michigan. It's beautiful outside. It's sunny. We're in the middle of summer. Our children are happy. They're out of school, although the school year this year, as we all know, was a little bit strange, to say the least. And we have a new normal, and we're just trying to learn to live, to get by. And with the reason why I wanted to bring you this challenge to change is because I want you to be the best versions of yourself. You know, I started this in the midst of our stay home order. Well, actually, at the beginning of our stay home order, it was started initially to give hope. And because I am so passionate about proper co-parenting and kind co-parenting in the midst of either ugly and bitter divorces or separations, custody battles. I want you all to be the best versions of yourself. So I started this challenge to change, the Cronin challenge to change, to challenge each and every one of you, of all of us, to be, to show up and be the best people we can be. It's, it's about digging deep within ourselves and being kind. And as cliche as it sounds, it's about being the person that you want that other person to be. You know, I don't know if you viewers or any of you believe in the law of attraction, but I do. And I believe that what we put out comes back to us. So if you want kindness to come back to you, well, then you have to be that kind person. I know it's not always easy. I know in the midst of divorce, in the midst of separation, in the midst of ugliness and hurt and anger and despair, we want to lash out. Well, Children are always watching. No matter who you're involved with, what you're doing, whether you're dealing with, you know, an ex who's just completely unreasonable, or you happen to have been the victim of some awful abuse, you cannot lash out no matter how much you want to. So the reason I started this challenge to change is because I want you to all know that you're not alone in this endeavor to be the best people we can be for our children. I have been a practicing attorney for over 25 years. It's flown by. Life just flies by. But we don't get any dress rehearsals. And I've seen the most horrific battles in court. And I say to myself, why do people do this? There must be a better way. And I want to bring a better way to all of you. So, you know, at the onset, we started this challenge to change, focusing on co-parenting and digging deep in co-parenting. And then after a few weeks of that, I brought some amazing, fantastic guests to you. And I will talk about all of them. So we started with Ashley Silverman, you know, she crushed her weight loss goals and she's coaching others on her journey. And Belinda Grunwald, who was an elder care specialist. We also met with Risa Kirshner. She's the author of Feel Better Mommy. She donated hundreds of books to various Detroit hospitals for children whose parents were hospitalized during COVID. And she herself was a divorcee and who dealt with so many other issues of co-parenting. And then we talked to Rebecca Agnew, my cousin, and she's an amazing musician. She's also a program manager at Gilda's Club in Detroit. We talked with Denisha Lyons, an amazing, amazing pastry chef. You have to try her food. She's so amazingly talented. She's the owner and pastry chef of Petite Sweets in Detroit. We talked with Lighthouse Live musical event coordinators, Howard Hertz and his son, Ryan Hertz, they wanted to give back so much to those dealing with COVID. And even Tiffany Johnson, she was a shark attack survivor. She's a motivational speaker. You know, she also withstood another horrific accident even after her shark attack. So she knows her life has been saved to help others and to give back. That's what I'm trying to do here with this challenge to change. And I have brought guests, and other guests too. It's amazing in these three short months 
of this stay home order of COVID, we've brought so much information. And just an aside, you may have to come back to this video because I'm trying to show you and bring to you some information to help you, to guide you, to provide knowledge. It's in giving people knowledge and educating them that they derive their most power. You know, some people just don't know what they don't know. And that's, you know, that's the start of a journey of educating and learning and digging deep. And we dug deep with some important issues, race relations, for example. We talked with Dr. Sabrina, who has helped so many people as her own therapist and social worker, but we talked race relations with her. We also talked race relations with Source Books Detroit owners, Janet Jackson, Janet Webster Jones, excuse me, and her daughter, Allison Jones Turner. We talked to Mr. Sto Tony Stovall. He's the owner of Detroit's oldest men's clothier, Hot Sam's. We also talked to his daughter, who is an amazing dynamic speaker, Lauren. And I encourage Lauren to get more into politics. She's just such a bright young woman. And Sheriff Chris, Chris Swanson, let's not forget about him and that amazing interview that he gave. He unilaterally decided to disarm himself and his officers and walk with the people, walk in, in unified harmony, not as a protest, but as, a, as a educating those watching to say, you know what, we're not going to separate ourselves. We are going to be one with our community. And it's only in being one with our communities can we move our nation forward. You know, there's so much discussion now about race relations and politics and the right and the left and whose party are you on and the media supporting one party over another. And honestly, it's enough to drive anybody crazy. And you just have to learn, in my opinion, to tune it all out and look within yourself. What do you believe? Don't follow the headlines, but what do you believe as a person? What are your values? What type of integrity are you bringing to the table? There are so many people that, you know, want to continue this fight over, over race and who's better and who's not. And I believe we're all equal. There is no color. The true beauty is in being colorblind, not looking at color, not one-upping one another because of color. And, you know, we've all seen it. We've seen such huge prejudices. And we've seen prejudices not just with race, but with religions and nationalities and creeds. And for what? For what? You know, if you truly believe in yourself and are confident in your own skin, you don't worry so much about what the next guy is doing. You know, and that led me to discussing the human being and the, and the wherewithal in terms of emotional stability. And that's why I wanted to bring to you Kathy Saputo. She talked a lot about therapy and the emotional well-being. And then just last week, I spoke with world-renowned author and entrepreneur and cardiologist, Dr. Joel Kahn, a brilliant man who focuses more on the physical well-being of somebody. And, you know, when I was discussing and wanting to discuss co-parenting in the beginning, and now I'm coming full circle and continuing my discussion and digging really deep within the co-parenting atmosphere, in order to be the best parent, let alone co-parent, you have to have that inner confidence to know that you are doing right, not only for yourself, but for your children. You know, there's a saying, sometimes you have to do bad to do good. Well, it's never bad when you know you're looking at the long-term effects of your child's well-being in their life. You know, I'm a divorcee. I'm a mom of three young children. And when I was going through my own divorce, so many people were critical of how kind I was still being to my ex, soon-to-be ex and ex-husband. But, you know, I looked at it and I thought, you know, I, I have to dig deeper. 
I can't show hatred. I can't show animosity because my children are watching. No matter how wronged you may feel, no matter what abuse you may have been in or turmoil you may have been in, you have to do the best acting that you can possibly do in the beginning to arm yourself with that tenacity, with that strength to move forward. You know, it's beyond an Emmy and an Oscar award, ladies and gentlemen. You are giving the performance of your life. And make no mistake, it takes a much greater strength inside of you to be strong in the face of adversity than to mirror that same resentment back at you. Anyone can be mean. Anybody can be a witch or a jack, you know, I don't want to swear on TV and viewers, but anyone can be a jerk. Anyone. It takes inner strength and a wherewithal and a mental fortitude, ladies and gentlemen, to be that rock, to be that strength. Because you, no matter what, you know your children are watching. And your lawyer matters. To be a pit bull is not cool, ladies and gentlemen. Because that lawyer that is trying to be that pit bull for you during that short eight months to 12 months, it, it doesn't matter because in the end, you are the one that has to deal with this co-parent long after that lawyer is out of the picture. Your children are always watching you. If you're hiring a pit bull to fight for whatever you need or want, well then you may win the battle but you're certainly not winning the war. If you're dealing with money and all of that, that's another topic of consideration. And if you're also dealing with huge emotional and psychological issues and turmoil and someone who's really truly sick at the other end, well then you may need a pit bull for, a sh excuse me, for a short time. But remember the long-term effects of that. Now, I'm not saying to be a doormat. Please do not hear me wrong. Do not perceive me as being a doormat. Do not perceive my kindness or my imploring that you should be kind in the face of adversity as being a doormat. I am simply telling you to maintain your inner strength and your inner confidence no matter what other people are saying to you. Yes, you will get criticism. Yes, you will say, why are you being so nice to that person? Because he cheated a million times or he abused you or he's an addict. He doesn't know what he's doing or he's this or he's that or she's a cheater or she's that. You know, if, if, if you know a woman who, you know, ran around on this man who was such a good provider and a great dad and he busted his butt to be home and take care of those kids and meanwhile, you know, earning an income, but yet that wife was whatever, cheating with the pool boy. It, and he decided all of us, he needed to separate or divorce, but he's still being kind. Well, good for him because he knows the bigger picture. He knows that his children are watching. And I don't care if the other parent is as big of a jerk as he or she can be. You still have to dig deep because again, your children are watching. And what matters to me, ladies and gentlemen, are our children. So do you know that the divorce rate in the United States is now at about 40%? At times, it, it was about 50% for a while. We're now third in the country. Actually, Maldives is the, the first country, number one in divorce. It's an Islamic nation, but they're still number one. But for the United States, the reason why our divorce rate is so high, and this is in no particular order, but number one is infidelity. Uh, two, and one and two are often, you know, back and forth. Sometimes it's money, sometimes it's infidelity. Now they're saying it's money and financial reasons, especially in COVID. There's a lot of divorces happening. A lot of it because of the stay home order. A lot of it because the stresses and the tensions. And, you know, stress is just another word for being overwhelmed. 
When you're overwhelmed beyond your capacity, that's when people are stressed. And some people have more of a capacity than others. So you can't judge someone's stress level just because this situation may not be stressful for you. Well, it certainly could be stressful for somebody else. So never try to judge someone for their current situation until you put yourself in their shoes. And for me, when I try to coach my clients, and we do this all the time, we have great success with our clients because we coach them, we show them, we teach them. We often go so minuscule as to show them how to edit their text messages. I'm here to empower you. My team and I at Cronin Law are here to empower you to get you through divorce, not just for the best result of your divorce, but for the best results of your life. You know, make no mistake, just because the, you know, divorce and children in the courts only see your children through the age of 18 doesn't mean it stops there. You have your entire life to live with the parent of your children, whether married or not. It's a lifelong choice when you end up getting pregnant and then having a child with somebody else, whether you're married or not, ladies and gentlemen. And so for that child who didn't ask to be born, who didn't ask then to be the result of a split household, you, in my opinion, have an obligation to rise up and deliver for your child. So in addition to the other matters that I spoke to you about, financial reasons, infidelity, some people just don't want to feel committed. You know, we have such despair disposable things in our lives now. And as great as technology has been for our country and for our world, well, technology in certain situations hasn't been so good. People are jumping ship sooner than ever. They want that quick satisfaction. They're not used to working at things. You know, they don't like to have to be invested in something. And I know I'm generalizing, but for the most part of our young, our youth, People don't want to, you know, be committed. And that's a reason why the millennials, really ages 23 to 38, are waiting to get married. And that's another reason why our divorce rate has lowered. So simply because our divorce rate moved from 50 to 40 percent, you know, those numbers are a little skewed because people are waiting to get married. And also the statistics are showing the reason why millennials are waiting is because they had such a horrible time growing up in a split household. You know, numbers really don't lie, ladies and gentlemen, and it's tough on them. So remember, they didn't ask to be a ping pong ball and all of this. They didn't ask to live out of suitcases. They didn't ask to have two households. So why are you fighting over the little things? Why aren't you helping your child if they forgot something at their dad's or if they need something at their mom's? Why are you putting them in the middle? We have an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to change this dynamic. That's why I'm so passionate about this. I don't want our youth, our generation coming up to be victimized anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to think about your actions. There is a psychological and emotional toll on our youth, not just on you. Stop being so selfish. I don't want to be perceived as lecturing you, but I need to get my message out loud and clear. If you don't understand the ramifications, if you don't have this knowledge of how deeply you are hurting your children, then you will never change. It only, change only comes with awareness and with acknowledgement of your actions. Ladies and gentlemen, the wounds for our children and the, for instance, the millennials are so deep that it has definitely affected their behavior. So I have to practice this myself. It's not easy. When I tell you that you have to be, you know, an actor, when I tell you you have to, you know, t 
try to get that Oscar, that Emmy, or both to be able to put your head down on that pillow so you can sleep peacefully at night. I'm not kidding. Sometimes it does take that outward action to then over time feel it on the inside. You know, I've seen the worst of cases in my years practicing family law. I've seen horrible, horrible, horrible incidences. I've seen suicides. I've seen attempted suicides. I've even seen attempted murder suicides all over custody battles. I have seen depression. I have seen despair. I have seen horrible abuse. But yet I still have to teach my clients, even in the, in the view and in all of that, even in the midst of all of that horrible experience, I have to teach them that they have to rise up and still show respect for that other parent. Why? Because that child is in the middle. Now, if there's abuse on that child, obviously, then there's a completely another story here. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about horrible treatment of you during the marriage or of each other, or if there's addiction issues, which is another reason for divorce, all these other issues. I am here to help you. My team and I can help you. So the reason why, again, this is so passionate for me is because research has shown that parental divorce and separation is associated with an increased um, risk of depression, eating disorders, substance abuse, sexual abuse, and suicide. In fact, did you know that suicide is the second leading cause of death ages 15 to 24? And now we see it in children as young as eight years old. I'm not saying your divorce is causing this, but there is definitely a correlation. And so why, why not do something about that? Each year, this statistic is increasing at a shocking rate. You know, divorce wreaks havoc on the psycho psychological stability of you. Imagine what it's doing to your, ch excuse me, to your children. Imagine what it's doing to any child of any age, I don't care if they're young infants or if they're adult children, it still hurts. It's still hard. You know, I've seen adult children truly damaged from their parents' divorce because they fought incessantly over money, over things that they really, truly didn't have to. You know, I know they say money is the root of all evil. But if you can avoid it, for God's sakes, avoid it because your children are watching. Don't you want to be there for your children's graduations and weddings and your grandchildren's births? You know, you have a long life to live and you want to live it in the best way possible. And I know we can do this. So I, before I move on to our co-parenting and digging deeper, I want to talk to you about who we're having on next week. Next Tuesday, July 14th at 1130, my guest is Ryan Beal. He is the CEO and founder of the Live Network. That's a public benefit corporation dedicated to moving the needle forward in adolescent mental health on a personal level and also global scale. He also launched Prepare You, which is a new health curriculum for age 13 to 18 year old students to help them navigate the challenges they face as young adults. Ryan is very passionate about lowering the suicide rates in young adults as am I. And so we're trying to join forces and next Tuesday is going to be the first of many to come on these, this topic of preventing young people's suicide. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the great news is you're here because we're all well-intentioned. You know, we want the best for our lives and our children's lives. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't care enough to listen. And if you didn't care enough to listen, then I wouldn't want you to listen anyway. I want those people to come on board with me and in this challenge to change 
because you want to. You want to be a better version of you. You're looking forward to the opportunity that you look at your child as he or she has grown and you know you provided the best upbringing that you possibly could. Even in the face of a horrific divorce, you know you gave that child all you could. And as a result, that child is blossoming, blossoming and becoming the best version of him or herself. We all want a prosperous life. We all want abundance in every area. You want to show your children true love. You have to show them by first being the love that you want emulated back. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the premise of the Cronin Challenge to Change. And I invite each of you to bring forward your questions. I'm ready. I'm here. And I want to answer any question that you might have. And I have one right here now. So it was said that Gandhi said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Yes, actually, yes, I'm a true believer in that. And in order to be that, you have to act it. And so this viewer is asking, how do you do that in the midst of horrible divorce turmoil and fighting and arguing well, it's baby steps. You know, I'm not saying you have to be this inner confident person all at once. It's baby steps. It's, first of all, you know, learning a little bit about yourself. You know, you have to take a step back. You have to ask yourself, you know, what do I need? You know, when you're in a you know, a, a plane and they go through all the safety measures. And if something's wrong in the airplane, they talk about first putting your oxygen mask on before you do that of your family members. Well, that's what I'm talking about here. We have to first look at ourselves and look to see what do we need? What nourishment do we need? You know, some people find nourishment in the Bible. Some people find nourishment talking to their friends some people find nourishment working out, getting your mind, you know, occupied on something else for a minute. Some people find nourishment meditating or reading or listening to music or taking a walk or getting a pet. You know, there's so many different things that people do to give themselves nourishment, you know. And, you know, I know people say, oh, treat yourself or get a manicure or a pedicure or a massage but that's only superficial stuff. That's not true nourishment of what you need to feed your soul. I'm talking about true inner working and learning how to know what makes you tick and what makes you change and what makes you go and what makes you rise. You know, we all derive energy from various Things. Some people, like I said, gain energy from listening to a great song in the morning on their way to work. And I think a lot of reason why some people are feeling so much overwhelmed is they don't have that time anymore to themselves. They can't take that time to go work and drive and listen to the music. So if you're still home, if you're still not going somewhere to the office, for instance, Find a quiet spot and just realize what do I need to help me stay motivated and upbeat. And, you know, I mentioned earlier talking to friends and um, I just want to encourage you to just be careful who you talk to because sometimes as well-intentioned as our friends and family may be, they might not um, want the best for you. They might not, they think they want the best for you, but they don't necessarily know what the best for you is. When I made that reference earlier about how families sometimes can interfere and not want the true dynamic of the co-parenting to be peaceful because they still are hurt because of the divorce, you know, divorce affects all members of your family, not just you and not just the two of you, and not just the children, it expands, especially if you've had a long-term marriage. 
your family is affected, your cousins, your friends, you know, and they always say, well, which friend is going to choose which of the parent? And it's true. It's very hard sometimes to navigate these waters, but you have to try not to take things so personally. And if your family member really wants you to be, you know, abrupt or not nice, well, then you have to ask what their motivation is and always say, you know, thank you. I appreciate your feedback, but I need to do what's in the best interest of my children. And only you and your, hopefully your attorney knows that. And if it's a different attorney that you need to find to truly look at what's in the best interest of your children, then you do that. Because remember, it's a long-term play. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And any attorney that tells you it's a sprint, then go run far. I will tell you, though, that what happens during the divorce is crucial. And don't sign a judgment unless you absolutely know 100% that is what you want for the long term. Because it is very very hard to change a judgment. It's very hard. So that being said, I want to take another um, question from our viewers. And um, I uh, don't have my phone at the moment, so I'm trying to get it from my lovely assistant. All these questions coming in. So here's another question. I myself get depressed every time I'm in court during my divorce. I really want to work with my ex-wife. I'm thinking just giving in to what she wants, and that may be a good start. Do I risk being taken advantage of if I do this? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mentioned earlier, simply because you want to be kind and amicable does not mean to be a doormat, to roll over, to not have your own demands. You need a lawyer who will fight, but fight fairly. You need to be assertive, appropriately assertive, or even aggressive, but appropriately so when necessary. If you have to manage the other side's attorney, well, then you do that. You need a strong lawyer who can do that. And I also encourage you to find a lawyer that is very comfortable trying to bring to the table a solid, strong resolution. You know, they always say a, a, a good settlement is when neither side is truly, truly ecstatic, but you can both live with it. That's a good and fair settlement. If you can both live with it and you both understand that this is for the long term, and again, especially when children are involved, you want to make sure your children are definitely taken care of and, and you need to know that that lawyer is fighting for the rights of you, for your children, and the long-term play, not the short-term play. You know, oftentimes I get questions about whether they should send a text message or whether they should fight or whether they, um, you know, need to do any kind of, you know, discussions about the text messages don't put anything in text that you don't want the entire world to see, especially when you're going through a divorce. And that's actually a good rule for post-divorce, um, especially when children are involved. So, you know, it's important to know that you need to be very kind. You don't always have to be explanatory. You can keep your answers short. You can keep them very explicit and try to answer the question asked and don't go beyond that. But again, that's a good topic for a good lawyer to help coach you through things and to help you respond, to know how to respond in texting and emailing um, and whatnot, because it's very, very important, especially if you're in the middle of a divorce. You got to believe that that's going to be seen in your family court, you know, matter and your friend of the court matter, and you definitely want to make sure you are showing up to be the best version of yourself. You can't hold that other person accountable if you yourself are not. So just remember that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So make sure you rise up and you show your best self 
every single time. Here's another question. When things get escalated with my co-parent on the phone, what's the best way to handle this so it doesn't continue to be non-productive? <laughs> well, I know this personally. So the best thing that you can do instead of fighting back is to say, you know what? I don't like where this is going. I need to take a moment and I'll call you back. Or, or we can have this discussion when you settle down. Or I'm not going to tolerate this behavior. I won't tolerate this behavior any longer. And when you feel like you want to approach this subject, then we can discuss it when you're more reasonable or rational. There's a few different ways. It just depends on your relationship. You know, you can say we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. You choose. I'm trying to be kind and respectful and I will not tolerate anything less than that. So that's what you need to discuss. That's what you need to do. That's the kind of behavior you need to start learning how to act and be. I know it's hard. Sometimes, you know, I have clients who, you know, get anxious just at the sound of a ringtone because they know it's their ex or they know it's the person that they share parenting time with, with their children. You know, it's, it's, years and years and years built up. It's so much emotion. When people are dealing with emotional stuff, it's ugly sometimes. It's not pretty and people react and they don't pause and they don't take a breath and they're not working on themselves and they're not doing, you know, all of their daily rituals that keep them grounded. But we need to do that. You know, we need to dig deep to do that. And if it's taking a moment, taking a breath before you respond, then you need to do that. Um, here's a question. Sabrina, I once recommended journaling and I have to thank you for that advice. When can I expect your workshops? Will they be available in line or in person? Yes, to both. They, we are working on that steadily. I'm working on the content. I'm so excited to be bringing it to you. Um, we are working steadfast around the clock, trying to get um, this on the ground and in your hands very, very soon. So please be on the lookout for our workshops. We're hoping this will be released in the fall of 2020. It will be an online program that you can download and that you can view and watch to help you navigate this uncharted territory of, you know, whether it's parenting, co-parenting, even sometimes, you know, parents in a, in a more tumultuous marriage. You know, I've seen children suffer even when parents are married because they should be divorced. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's easy to divorce or you should stay married or I, there's no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. I just am trying to impress upon you the importance of being the best version of yourself because your children are watching. And if you're saying to me, well, how can I do this? Because my ex is doing this or it's a tit for tat game or, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, we have to do what's best for our kids. I have uh, something that, you know, that, that someone was just talking, you know, that just commented. So I'm looking over my shoulder because there, there should be no excuses, right? No excuses. When our children are at the, in the middle at stake, their livelihood, their, their well-being, their, their success, is at stake. So, you know, don't say, oh, well, my ex is doing this, so I'm just going to do it. No, be the better person. I can't tell you how many referees at the front of the court level will say, oh my gosh, it's unbelievable to me what they fight about. You know, I have seen horrific custody battles that I've been the attorney of, and it just, it's, it's amazing to me. Some attorneys don't care because they like the money. You know, they'd rather get the $20,000 in a custody battle, or worse yet, I've seen upwards of fifty to one hundred thousand dollars in custody battles when this then this family doesn't have any money, and so they're indebted for years to the lawyer who fought and fought and fought for what? For what? For your children to be even more stressed out on the verge of depression, anxiety, and suicide? For what? Look at the bigger picture, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the bigger picture. We are trying to form the next generation of youth to be the best version of themselves. You want these, you know, 
these statistics to continue to increase? I don't think you do. I think we all want what's best for our kids, but it starts in the home and it starts with you and your family is going to look different, but it's still a family. They didn't choose their parent. They didn't choose their mom or dad. You did. You did. So simply because the family looks different, it's still a family. And whether that other parent gets remarried or has other children or has stepkids, that your child has another experience. You should look at it positively. They have the opportunity to expand their lives, to expand upon their knowledge base and what they know to be true. And I am excited to help you navigate a better future for you and your children. I have another question about boundaries. So what boundaries can we start establishing to begin a mutually healthy relationship? Well, the boundaries are what, you know, there, there are so many, but it really just depends on you and what you can tolerate. Remember what I said about stress Stress is when you are overwhelmed to the point beyond your capacity. So if you're so stressed about an exchange that it carries over into your time with your children, well, that's not good. So we need to protect you so that you're the best version of yourself when you do have that parenting time. So what can some of those boundaries look like? Well, it can look like you don't allow that other parent into your home because you need a safe haven. It can be you don't allow that parent to call you anymore, especially if your children are of a certain age and they have their own phones. Well, then they can call that child directly. They don't have to go through you anymore. Unless, of course, it's about the parenting time. You need to establish strong and firm boundaries that whenever it's about the children, that they talk, contact you. They don't put the child in the middle. Unless, again, of course, your children, in my opinion, are older, maybe 15, 16, even 14 sometimes, they can discuss parenting time. But when they're younger, they can't handle it. Or if it's a new divorce, they can't handle it. Don't put that burden on them. Again, they didn't ask to be in the middle. So don't put them there. You know, if, if there's an issue of a backpack left at the other person's house, well, then you may have to dig deep within yourself, call that other parent and say, hey, you know, can we meet halfway or can you drop it off or, you know, I can pick it up, whatever it is. You need to remember your children didn't ask to have two separate households. And remember what I told you earlier about the statistics and millennials not getting married and also having a higher rate of suicide and depression and anxiety. They didn't ask to be in two separate households. Would you like it? Would you like living out of a suitcase 50% of your life? Would you like forgetting something you need for school at the other person's house? Would you like forgetting your favorite teddy bear or your favorite blanket? Would you like not having that with you? Would you like being sent to your other parent's house in old clothes because you're afraid as the parent, you're not going to get those clothes back? As a child, would you like that? As an adult, would you like that? Let, you know, I, I've seen so many custody battles where the parents will change the clothes that they're sending their son or daughter in to go to that other parent's house. Instead of buying more clothes for that other parent to keep at their house because maybe they can't afford it, or instead of showing a generous spirit, they show a stingy one. And guess who suffers? Not the other parent your children. I mean, think about it, guys. Is that sensical? Is that reasonable? Does it make sense? If you can afford Starbucks coffee, well, then you can afford an extra pair of socks or underwear or shorts or a t-shirt to wear so that they can keep it at their dad's or mom's house. You have to set your priorities. You have to remember who should be first your children. So let's stop fighting about things that don't matter anymore. I want to reform the way our courts see 
parenting time, the way our families see custody battles, the way our children experience divorce. I want to change it so that our youth and our future is better because our youth's future is better. So ladies and gentlemen, we have to be the change. We have to rise up and I know we can do it. I have another question. I was recently scolded by a judge for, in her words, being, quote, petty over parenting time, which really frustrated me. I was simply taking the time I was promised when my ex altered the schedule to make vacation time. I was frustrated that I agreed to it, but then he refused to give it back. What can I do? Now I look petty in the eyes of the judge. So often I see this and usually, not always, but usually we see where it's one parent who's constantly giving, giving, and giving. We saw it during the marriage and we see it during the divorce and post-judgment, post-divorce. It's usually one parent that continues to give, 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 give. So in this instance, I say if it if it has accumulated to this over time, if it's a one-off, then, oh, well, you've learned, you know, shame on me. You know, I, I gave, and then I'm not going to make this mistake again. If it's a one-time occurrence, it's the same. It's like the saying, you know, shame on, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Don't let that to happen again. If you need to set firm boundaries when it comes to parenting time and no alterations for it or from it or deviations from it, then you do that. I highly encourage you to put everything in writing, everything in a very non-emotional, unemotional, pragmatic, reasonable way, not jabbing the other person, not trying to get digs in, but very just factually set it out and say, because of this, blah, blah, blah. I'm either not going to allow an exchange of parenting time or a deviation from our schedule, you know, because you didn't or whatever, what, how, however you want to word it. If you want to call me, I'm happy to walk you through that text message or that email. Uh, we do that all the time at my firm. I'm happy to do that for you. Um, but in terms of, you know, a repeat, a pattern, you've given, 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 you know, and, and again, Unfortunately, it's the giver in a marriage or relationship that typically is the giver post judgment. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to me to hire a lawyer to rectify some of this situation? You know, we see it all the time. Bullies continue to bully until they're, you know, until there's some pushback. Sometimes it takes one sucker punch. Sometimes it takes one punch to knock that bully out. And once they're knocked out, they won't do it again or they'll realize their behavior. And sometimes they won't. Sometimes you're dealing with mental illness on the other side. Sometimes you're dealing with, you know, addiction on the other side. Sometimes, you, you know, you just, you don't know what you're going to get. And in those instances, ladies and gentlemen, it can be hard. It can be frustrating. You know, I have clients that say, oh my gosh, why did I get divorced? You know, I see my kids half the time now, which is much less than I would have if I stayed married. And I'm still dealing with my jerk of an ex. You know, my response to that, um, because I felt it too, my, my response to that is by being separated both from an emotional and logistical perspective from that person, you are learning how to be a stronger, better person. When you're, when you're in that environment, that negativity, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, just you're not getting along or you've grown apart or you're more friends, you're not real, like you're not lovers anymore. You're just more like best friend, girlfriend, you know, you just, when, when you're, when you're in that toxic relationship, your children feel it and you're not the best version of yourself. And let's just say in the best of circumstances, let's just say that there's no toxicity. There's just no love. You know, don't you want your children to see a loving human connection? Don't you want them to see what affection is like? Don't you want to them to see warmth and love and kindness toward the person that you're having in your 
atmosphere in your home. Remember when I said, you know, divorce, you're, you're still family. It just looks a little different. Well, hopefully once you heal and you learn more about yourself so you don't repeat the same patterns, once you heal and you welcome someone into your life and you still have children that see a loving, healthy relationship and you're still friendly with their parent, their, their dad or mom, you know, and it's the best of both worlds. You know, divorce doesn't have to be ugly and animus. It doesn't have to show or bring out the malicious side of people. I know oftentimes it does, and usually that's the norm. But I want to bring it out so that it's not the norm anymore. I want to make the change. I want to be the change. I want these workshops to empower you to be the best version of yourself. And I need you all to know that it does get better. So those people who feel, you know, at a loss or hopeless that they're going through it and it's just the worst time of their lives, you know, and even post-judgment in the first few years, if it's horrible and awful, it gets better. It gets better. Life is worth living. Bring some joy to your lives. Learn how to be the best version of yourself. And then you can co-parent beautifully. I can help you through this. I can help navigate these unchartered waters. You know, I can help you so that you have strong, healthy-minded, loving children who want to get married or who want to have a peaceful, loving relationship. You know, this doesn't just apply to marriages anymore, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it applies to relationships in general. You know, you don't have to have that piece of paper to know what it's like to treat somebody. And if you have a child with somebody that you weren't married to, well, then you're going to have issues down the road with custody more than likely. So you're going to need these lessons in learning how to deal with someone, whether you like that person, whether you can't stand that person, whether you wanted the divorce or the separation, whether you didn't, whether they wronged you a million times, whether they cheated you, stole money from you, were addicted to drugs, whether you lived a horrible life with that person. In the end, what matters is that you are at peace with yourself and then you can be a peaceful parent to your children. I have another question. I am excited to listen to your series. I feel like every problem I have is discussed. So thank you for that. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that comment. Um, my question is my eight-year-old son made a comment that I never let him do fun things. I asked why, and it was because I require him to wear a helmet and daddy doesn't. I am trying to be respectful of my ex's parenting style, but is this something I have the right to speak to him about? Maybe my son isn't clear as to what really happened and I don't want to attack my ex, but I'm concerned. So I've seen this a lot where the co-parenting styles are so different. I, I've seen it where you know a young child was riding on the back of a motorcycle, not fully clothed, no helmet, you know, and the mom was all concerned you know, similar here with not wearing a helmet, riding a bike or, you know, skateboarding or whatnot. The thing that you have to remember is it is hard to relinquish that control. It is extremely hard. And that's where a lot of uh, this tension and fighting and bitterness comes from. But here we're dealing with something different, the health and safety and well-being of your child. So in my opinion, I would simply send either a text message or an email, or if you feel comfortable speaking to that person, sometimes things are better in a verbal discussion rather than in a written discussion. Um, because sometimes text messages can be misconstrued, especially when there's an argument that has already happened. But take the emotion out of it, take the blame out of it, because we don't know yet what really happened. So I would just ask, in a very non-confrontational way, ask this person, you know, I know you're, you know, this is the dad. So ask the dad, you know, hey, whatever this person's name is, you know, um, our son said that, you know, he was riding without having to wear a helmet. Is that true? You know, and, and then if the dad says, well, well, if he gets all huffy, well, yeah, what are you accusing me of? Blah, blah, just say, you know what, you can, you can disarm the conversation. You can say, you know what, I'm not accusing you. I just... I really would like it if, you know, we had the same rules at each other's houses. And, you know, that's never 
always going to happen. Sometimes it happens in a very good co-parenting relationship. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes the two people work together well as a team. Sometimes it doesn't. So all you can then say is, you know, I would appreciate it if you would respect my wishes as his mom. Please have him wear a helmet, you know, um, and it's, it's very important for me and the safety of our child that he wears a helmet when he does X, Y, or Z. And that's all you can say. And if it comes up again, you know, and, and, you know, maybe reaffirm it in a text message or confirm it in an email. However, the dynamic is between the two of you will really depend on moving forward and how you should better deal with that. But it's always good to keep it in writing just in case it ever needs to go back to court. Now, again, these one-offs are not something that you need to really bring to the attention of a court or your lawyer, but sometimes it is very important to continue to document because of a repeated pattern. If you see that your, you know, the, the parent of your child, the other parent is continuing to put your child in harm's way, whether it's, you know, riding in a car where that person was drunk, I don't care if it's one time, you need to bring that to the attention of the court. We have to look at the sliding scale of the offense. You know, if it's if it's riding a bike without a helmet one time, well then that's not as severe as riding in the car one time while that parent was drunk or under the influence. But remember, you need to have proof of that. So you, if it's your older child telling you that, then that's something that you can definitely consider. If it's a younger child, well, then you need to do your own research and homework to find out the truth of the matter before you start accusing somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's all relative, and you have to make sure you can back up these allegations. And sometimes children will play the parents off of one another. Sometimes children are very, very smart at manipulating the parents against each other. So especially if the child feels, you know, that they don't have any control or say in the situation, that's when the two parents have to align themselves. And that's when it's so important for the parents, you know, in separate households to have similar rules. And schooling is a very good example of that. How late one parent allows a child to stay up during the school year, you know, playing video games, talking to their friends on the phone, whatever, should be, you know, discussed between the parents. It's very important to maintain similar rules and similar boundaries for the children when discussing how to appropriately parent when you're in two separate households. I have another question, and I know we're getting to the end of our hour. See, we have so much to discuss during these workshops, and I just can't wait to bring you more important information. But um, Here's another question. My daughters, 12 and 11, have created problems between me and my soon-to-be ex. They seem to enjoy feeding each of us misinformation, and me and my spouse were at each other's throats until we actually spoke to each other. The girls believe through their friends that parents at odds get them more treats. Well, that's interesting. Oddly, this has made us a team in parenting, but now they are using emotional blackmail. Should I send them to a therapist even though they say they won't go? Uh, well, here's, here's the issue. I personally believe in therapy. I believe in family therapy. I believe in therapy for children. I think again, when one is truly understanding of one's own issues or how they're acting or reacting or how they're being perceived or how their actions may be perceived, that's only then can they start improving their actions and behavior and their reactions. So yes, I do believe in family therapy. I believe in family therapy as a whole unit, even with a divorced family. Again, it's family. It just looks different. So if the two parents can get it together and get their act together enough to get the children there, then absolutely. I encourage that wholeheartedly. Because again, remember, you're trying to give your children the tools that they can take with them, not just during this finite time in their lives, but for the rest of their lives, not just during the time that they're young, but forever so that they can have a healthy relationship so that they can know what it's like to be truly valued as a human being. And it's when we value our children that we can feel 
more self-esteem, more confidence. We don't have the depression or the anxiety or the suicidal thoughts or ideations or hurting other people or these riots that we see. We, we understand how it is to take care of one another at a primal level. So when you have children playing off one another and against one another, they're taking the power back from the parents and the parents are giving them too much power. You need to be the parent. You need to be the bigger and better person. And you need to get your act together and get it with that X and say, Hey, we're going to take control. We're not giving the control to our children any longer. And we are unified in our approach to both parenting, disciplining, how they talk to us, how they respect us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Remember, you are still the parent, and the values that you are showing them, not just telling them, but showing them with your actions are what will dig deep and instill them to be the best versions of themselves. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy that you stayed with me for this full hour. I hope you got some information and some gained some power and knowledge and Again, you know, I, I said it earlier on Facebook that, you know, so many of you have asked about me and my personal experience and why I'm so passionate about this. And it's it's simply, it's just because that's I've lived it for 25 plus years as a lawyer. I've seen the worst cases and I've seen some pretty good ones too. And I've also living it. I'm a living testament that it can work. You know, I'm, I'm happy to say, and, you know, my children are happy and healthy and, um, you know, we have a good co-parenting relationship with their, my, with their dad. And it, it, it's no matter what you've been through, no matter how awful it may have seen, you know, yeah. And, you know, my ex just got remarried. And so it's, I'm encouraging my children to be involved more with, you know, their lives and their family and it, and it broadens and enriches their life you know instead of being bitter or hurt or you know whatever emotion you bring to the table instead of all of that embrace it for your children because it enriches their life you can look at things so many ways you know tony robbins who i love and follow has said you know nothing has meaning except the meaning you give it. So if you want to put a meaning on something negative and hateful and awful, you know, then it will, you know, then you will, then it will have that awful, negative, awful behavior or association. But instead, if you put a thought on it that, you know what, it, it's, it's empowering. My children will have a more rich life. You know, you can't have two thoughts going on in your brain at the same time. So try to think positively and try in the beginning, you're going to have to be that actor, you know, but it can be done. And ladies and gentlemen, please know that we at the Cronin Law Firm are here for you. I'm here for you. I can't wait to bring you my workshop. I can't wait to bring you more and more information to empower you to be the best version of yourself. And again, next week, Tuesday, July 14th at 1130, I'm going to be talking to Ryan Beal. He's my guest who I'm so excited to have. He's the CEO and founder of the Live Network. That again is a public benefit corporation dedicated to moving the needle forward on mental illness you know, we are all well-intentioned. Let's let our actions follow what we believe in our head to be true. It takes some inner confidence. It takes work, but I know you can do it. I know you can rise. I want to ignite you all. I want to empower you all. Stand up, be strong, be tough, and I know you can do this, guys. Thank you so much for being with me this past hour. I'm so excited to share more and more with you. Thank you again. God bless you all. And may you know that I'm here for you 24 seven. And may you know you can do this. I know you can, you have it in you. You have the spirit, you have the fire. Be the best version of yourself. Your children are watching. Bye for now. <laughs>